Hello, welcome to Karma's a Stitch. I'm Tanya, and this is going to be the first of 12 um, gift make along ideas or tutorials, however, you'd like to refer to them. I may refer to them differently throughout the year. I'm not sure. But this is the first one. And the idea behind this is to give folks something small and simple with the pattern and everything that they need, minus the wool and the needles, um, that they can utilize to make some small gifts throughout the year. So the idea is that I'll release a tutorial on the first Sunday of the month and you'll have all month to make as many as you'd like or none. Maybe that month it doesn't, it's not something that piques your interest. Um, um, this month it is a knitted dish cloth or face wash cloth or however you choose to use it. Um, but the idea is that there is a tutorial, a row by row tutorial. There is also, um, there'll be a print, and this this is where I stumble over my words. There'll be a printable version of it available um, for a small fee over on Coffee, so that if you do want something to print and take notes, you have that available. Um, the printable one will have three different sizes on it. This tutorial, this tutorial is all you'll need. Um, you do not need to go purchase the pattern. I am just trying to make it available. If for me, I prefer a printable pattern. Like I, it's my pattern and I even have it printed with little notes so that I can scratch off where I'm at. So that's just available. There are so many free patterns available on Ravelry. Um, there's lots of, of available things that you could utilize. This particular pattern, you don't need to purchase anything. Um, you can easily modify the stitch count and get a medium or a larger one or a smaller one, whatever size you would like. Um, but the idea behind it is so that you are able to make a gift and put it in a drawer and then come December, if you're anything like me, you're like, oh, I wish I would have made something for my neighbor, just something small that wasn't too labor intensive, but what an amazing, thoughtful gift, right? I would have loved to have given my neighbors some handmade dishcloths, <laughs> but I didn't think of it soon enough. So that's the idea is that come December, there are gifts in that little drawer that when I think of those people, I can grab something and wrap it with some fun something and and give a handmade gift. So that's the idea. If you would like to join in, there will be something available the first Sunday of each month. Um, now, this is, this is not, this has not been blocked and it has not had the two ends woven in, but this is the dishcloth that we will be making. Um, this is the pattern. It's basically a basket weave pattern. So I'm sure you can, if you've done basket weave before, it is knitting and purling. It's all you need to be able to do. You're gonna cast on, you're gonna knit and purl, and then you're gonna bind off. And that's really all there is to it. So what I used for this, and I do tend, I like mine a little bit bigger. I mean, a lot of dishcloths aren't, aren't, aren't big enough for me. So I, I do like to make mine a, a little bit bigger, which is why there will be different sizes available in, in the printable version. Um, but the video tutorial is making this version right here. Now, with that being said, I am using Cascade Yarns, and I'm gonna cover up the price. I am using Cascade Yarns Ultra, Ultra Pima Fine Cotton, and it is 100% cotton. And these are sold in 50 gram skeins. There's 136.7 yards per 50 grams. And with this size, I used, oh, I weighed it. And I wanna say it was 33 or 34 grams. 
yeah, it's this size here is 34 grams. So with the remaining 16 grams, I will be making a smaller one, which will represent the smaller pattern on the, the written one, as well as another size that will be between this one and the small one that will use 25 grams or less. And the idea behind that is that you'll be able to use a 50 gram skein and get two dishcloths out of it. So that medium size on that hand on that printable copy is what is you should be able to get two dishcloths out of a 50 gram skein if you're using the the Cascade Ultra Pima Fine 100% um, cotton, which I'm using. I'm also using a US four. Um, I am very confident of that, but I do feel like because I'm saying it, I should double check. Yeah. So I am using a US4 circular. So you'll need your wool, you'll need your needles. And I use two stitch markers that mark the end of each row, the beginning and the end of each row. And I also use a progress keeper to help me differentiate the front to the back. You do not need those stitch markers and you do not need to have that progress keeper. Um, you do want to keep track of what row you're on. Um, the two sides do look different. So that's the back. And this is the front. So that will be, this will be the tutorial that we're going to be doing for January. So I hope you enjoy. I hope you're excited about this. Um, I'm super excited about it because I know I'm going to have gifts ready in December. <laughs> It's kind of a selfish thing. And these tutorials, these tutorials are going to help keep me accountable so that I continue to do this. And it's not like it has been in the past several years for me where I say, I want to do this, but I never follow through. And these video tutorials are as much for me as they are for you because they're going to keep me accountable to doing them. So welcome to January's tutorial, our first gift make along. All right. Let's get to it. Can you hear Anthony? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Let's get on to making a dishcloth. <laughs> okay, so let's cast on the dishcloth. Um, I apologize if my camera moves. It's a new tripod setup for me, so this is like a test run. Um, over here I have my iPad, which has the pattern on it, which I've written... It's kind of just a go-to. It's nothing super professional. <laughs> I don't have it up on Ravelry or anything. We're going to cast on 58 stitches. And I am using, as I said, Cascade Pima Cotton. And I'm using a US4 circular needle. Okay. I also have here two stitch markers, which I'll be using to just mark the end border, just because it helps me keep on track. So we're gonna cast on 58 stitches. So if that is, is, if your preferred way of casting on is long tail cast on, great. Whatever your preference is, it doesn't really matter. So this is the way I cast on. I just kind of hold it like a V, grab it, put my needle down in the middle, twist it around. There's cast on one. And then I go under. There's two. Three. Four. Five.
Okay, so let's hope that was 58 because I don't have much of a tail left there, do I? <laughs> so I'm going to double check my counting. Okay, perfect. So we're going to turn our work and we're going to knit this first side. Okay, so just straight knitting. I'm going to knit four. One, two, three, four. And then I'm gonna place my first marker. And then I'll just knit to the last four. One thing I like about using cotton is it feels great on your skin. Um, you can throw them in the washer, you can throw them in the dryer. And the one thing about knitting with cotton though is the stretch and elasticity in the fabric as you're knitting, there's not quite as much give. Um, some people talk about how working with cotton hurts their hands. And I think that's mainly because there's not as much give in the fabric as you're working. Um, like these, what I mean by that is when I go in here, there's not a whole lot of stretch in that fabric. Like I can pull up a little bit, but there's not a lot of give. Um, so I've worked with linen. I've enjoyed linen. I've enjoyed cotton. Um, I don't personally enjoy working on like, with real rustic wool, but I think that's just because I don't like feeling it on my skin. Um, so Use whatever wool is gonna work um, for you that you would like as a washcloth or the person you're gifting this to might enjoy as a washcloth. Um, I do tend to make mine a little bit larger just because I want something with a little more surface coverage. <laughs> so getting to the end of my row. Remember, I'm going to stop just before my last four stitches. So there's my last four. I'm gonna place my other marker on there. And I'm going to knit these last four. Now this is, I've just finished my right side row. Okay, so if you wanna mark that, okay, Put a little stitch marker in there and that'll be your right side row. But we're gonna turn our work and we're just gonna knit for rows two through seven. Okay, I have a row counter that I can use here. So I've done row one. Okay, and I'm gonna go two through seven, just knitting and I'll meet you back here. We're gonna knit these first four. We're just gonna ignore the fact that these stitch markers are here. And we're just gonna knit all the way around for rows two through seven. Okay, I'll meet you back here. Okay, so it has now been a couple of days. I did this initial cast on on New Year's Eve. Um, we just finished row oops, seven. 
Um, and since we were last here, I have ordered um, a set of straight needles. <laughs> so I'm hoping that those get here. I don't know that I'll have them for this recording, but that's okay. So we have here, I did change my stitch markers. I've got four stitches, a stitch marker, and then I've got 50 stitches, another stitch marker, and four more stitches. So I have 58 stitches total, and this right here is marking my right side row. I just finished row seven, so I'm gonna turn my work, and we're going to do row eight. This is a wrong side row, and we are going to knit four. Slip our marker, and then we're gonna purl 50. trying to hold this a little bit off the table because my stitch markers are hitting the table and my cable is hitting the table. I'm really hoping straight stick here <laughs> in the next week or so. All the way across to the next marker and then we'll slip that marker and then knit the last four. And you know, when you're doing a dishcloth, one of the great things is you don't have to worry too awful much about gauge. So if you're looking at this and it looks tighter than what you're doing, or you're looking at this and it looks a little looser than what you're doing, it's okay. Because gauge isn't a huge deal with dishcloths, right? So I've gotten to the second marker. my yarn to the back, slip that marker, and I'm going to knit four. Now we'll go to row nine. So on this next row, we're working on the front side again the right side, and we're going to knit six. So that would be these first four, slip the marker, knit two more. So we're gonna knit six. One, two, three, four, slip the marker, five, Six. Now comes what our row repeat is going to be. We're going to purl four. So I'm moving my yarn to the front. I'm going to purl four. One, two, three, four. I'm going to knit two. Move our yarn to the back. Knit two. One, two. And I'm going to repeat that to the last four stitches. So I'm going to repeat that to this last marker. Okay. So we're going to purl four. One, two, three, four. Yarn to the back. Knit two. One, two.
knit two. Now, I did that a total of eight times. I purled four, one, two, three, four. You can see the purl bumps here. See those purl bumps? And then I knit two. And I did that eight times across. I'm gonna slip my marker and I'm going to knit four. I'm gonna turn my work. And we're on to row 10. Okay, so with row 10, we're gonna start off with our repeat. Okay, so this is gonna be our repeat. We're gonna knit four. And then we're going to purl two. So I'm gonna slip my marker, move my yarn to the front, and I'm going to purl two. And I'm now going to do that nine times, all the way across, which should take me to my second marker. So my repeat again for row 10 is knit four, Purl two. And if you're able to read your work, you're essentially going in pattern. You see here, I'll have four knit stitches and then I have two purl bumps. That's because the previous row, these were four purls, and these were two knits, but I've turned my work. So now I have four knits because I'm going in pattern. and two purls all the way to my next marker. So I'm on my last repeat. So that was my last purl two. I'm gonna slip my marker and knit four. So these four stitches at the beginning and the end of each round or each row are always going to be knit stitches, okay? And that's gonna give us our border. Now I'm gonna turn my work. We're going to row 11, and row 11 is a repeat of row nine. So we're gonna knit six, which is these four stitches. One, two, three, four, slip the marker, five, six, and now starts our repeat. We're gonna purl four, one, two, three, four, knit two. Okay, so just like row nine, I'm gonna purl four, and we're just going in pattern right now. Do you see a pattern yet? Can you see the purl bumps here and the knits here? This is where we're purling four. This is where we're knitting two. We're purling four. Do you see the pattern? 
So we're basically just going in pattern. I'll show you whenever I finish this row. Knit two. So I just did my last knit two. I'm going to slip my marker and I'm gonna knit these last four. And that will be the end of row 11. So I'm gonna lay this down so I can show you if, if you if you're not familiar so if you look at this here okay you see these columns right here this would be where I knit two there's my knit one knit two and here's my pearl bumps one two three four so I was knitting four I'm so sorry I was purling four and then knitting two and then you can see the pearl bumps see the pearl bumps one two three four and then I was knitting two one two so I just finished my right side row which was row 11 so when I turn it over okay if I tell you that we're gonna go in pattern okay you see these columns here now that we've turned it over these now look like knit stitches, don't they? Knitting columns. So there's going to be a knit four, one, two, three, four, and two purl bumps. And that will be our repeat. Knit four, purl two, all the way across. So when we say go in pattern, you should be able to see four knit columns and two purl bumps. So Row 12 is a repeat of row 10. So we're starting off with our repeat. We're gonna knit four, because remember the first four are always gonna be knit. And we're gonna slip our marker, and then we're gonna purl two, because we're gonna just follow the pattern. So my next stitches would be a knit four. Purl two. Knit four. two purl bumps, so we're going to purl two. All the way to the next marker. Okay, so we are at the last marker. We're gonna put our yarn to the back, slip the marker, 
and knit these last four because these last four are always going to be knit. Okay, and so that is the end of row 12. I'm marking this off on my iPad. So row 13 is we are going to knit the whole row. So we're going to knit all the way across all 58 stitches. Just slipping the markers when we come to them all the way across. Okay, it's the end of row 13. All 58 stitches have been knit. Row 14, we're going to, so we're going to turn our work. So we're working the wrong side now. We're going to knit four. This is the wrong side, row 14. We're going to knit four, slip the marker, and then we're going to purl 50. So we're going to purl everything between the markers. So we're going to purl all the way to the next marker. Slip that marker, and we're going to knit four. Turn our work, and that's the end of row 14. So, next is row 15. It's a right side row. I'm going to move this progress keeper up a little bit hope that it'll stop dragging on the table some. So row 15 is a right side row. We are going to knit these first four. So let's knit these first four of row 15. We're gonna slip our marker. We're gonna purl three. And now comes our row repeat. This is the repeat we're gonna do across this row. Ready? We're gonna knit two. And purl four. Does this seem familiar? <laughs> three. 
three, four. Okay, so we're gonna knit two. And purl four. Knit two. I need to take that toy away from Lily. You guys can hear her crunching on toys. It's got a little chew toy. Knit two. Purl four. And if you are doing a different stitch count, okay, because if you wanted to cast on a different amount, you want to end up doing this pattern to the last nine stitches, okay? Take that toy away. There we go. Now maybe she'll be a little quieter. We're gonna purl four. So you're gonna wanna do this purl four. Knit two to the last nine stitches. So whatever number of stitches you cast on, you're gonna do that repeat. For me, it's a seven times total, okay? So if you did the same number of cast-ons that I did, if I, I cast on 58, if you did the same, you'll end up doing that repeat a total of seven times. And once you have finished, okay, you got to the last nine stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I've got the last four and then I've got five on this side of the marker. You see that? So then we're going to knit two. So yarn to the back. We're going to knit two, purl three, I'm going to slip the marker and we're going to knit four. Okay, we're gonna turn our work. Row 15 is done. Now we're gonna go to row 16. And we're gonna start by knitting seven, and that is going to include these first four. One, two, three, four, and we'll slip our marker, do five, six, seven, okay? So we're gonna start by knitting seven. One, two, three, four. Slip the marker, five, six, seven. Here comes our row repeat. We're gonna follow it. Follow the pattern that's already there. We're gonna purl two, one, two, knit four. One, two, three, four. And again, I'm gonna do that repeat seven times total. And if you have a different stitch count, you're gonna to go to the last nine stitches. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four, five on this side of the marker. 
and I've got one, two, three, four on the other side of the marker. So for my last nine stitches, I'm going to purl two, one, two, and I'm gonna knit seven. One, two, three, slip the marker, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so that is the end of row 16. Now, row 17 is a repeat of row 15. So I'm gonna turn my work. I'm on the right side. And I'm going to repeat row 15. That's knit four. Slip my marker. And I'm gonna purl three. And now comes my row repeat. I'm gonna knit two and purl four. Okay, so once I get to the last, last nine stitches, so I went ahead, so sorry. So my repeat was to knit two and purl four. So I just finished my knit two and then I purled four and I've got nine stitches left. One, two, three, four, five on this side of the marker. One, two, three, four for my last four stitches of the row. So with the last nine stitches, I'm gonna knit two. I'm gonna purl three. And then I'm going to slip my marker and knit those final four. Okay, now I'm going to turn my work for row 18. And row 18 is a repeat of row 16. So that was knit seven to include the first four. Four, slip the marker, five, six, seven. Okay, now comes our row repeat. I'm gonna purl two and knit four. Purl two and knit four all the way across. And for me and this number of stitches that I cast on, it is a total of seven repeats for me. So I'm knitting four and purling two for a total of seven repeats. 
but if you cast on a different number of stitches, which is just fine, um, you're gonna do this to the last nine stitches. Okay. So it was purl two, here's my two purls, knit four, one, two, three, four, to the last nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And what we're doing with those last nine stitches, we're following the pattern. So we're gonna purl two, one, two, and then we're gonna knit seven. One, two, three, slip the marker, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so that is row 18 complete. So here is what we've got so far. I'm going to take this off so you guys can see it. Okay, so what we have is the um, garter ridge stitches that we did down here. Is that garter or stockinette? This is garter ridge, I'm so sorry. So this is garter stitching, so where we're knitting each side. Whether we're on the right side or the wrong side, we're just knitting, okay? And then we started our pattern, okay? Now, what we're going to do for the rest of this dishcloth is we're going to repeat rows seven to 18. Now row seven was this final knit row down here, okay? So I'm gonna repeat rows seven to 18, looking at my scale here. I don't know if you guys can see that. But I have my ball of yarn sitting on my scale. So I know how much I have left. And I'm just gonna keep an eye on that after each repeat so that I can get, I'm hoping to get up to about here. It's about the size that I would like. Um, and then I'll end up doing um, the rest of the border and binding off. So I will meet you back here you repeat rows seven to 18 for however high you want your washcloth. Does that make sense? I'll come back and show you how my progress as I go. Probably at least another two more. Um, I've got plenty of wool left. I've got 31 grams. I just finished row 54. Can you see that with the reflection of the light? I'm so sorry. So I just finished row 54, which is the end of my fourth repeat. So I'm probably going to do at least another two more, and then I'll measure it. Okay, so I'm having a bit of a dilemma. I just finished row 66. Sorry about the reflection. So I just finished row 66, which is repeat number five. I have 26 grams left, so I have plenty of wool. 
Um, but when I measure it, like obviously it can stretch out. And I'm looking at about eight and a half inches. And the border is just over a half an inch. So if I have seven inches right now, just over, and I add another half inch, it's just shy of eight. But I really do like a big washcloth. So I think I'm gonna go ahead with my final repeat. Yep, I needed to just talk through it. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Maybe you don't want another repeat. Maybe this is where you wanna stop, um, which is perfectly fine. A lot of patterns that I see for washcloths, they're not that, they're not that big. So I like a larger one. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do one more repeat. Look at that. So I just finished my sixth repeat. I'm really happy with the size. That was 78 rows. Come on now, there we go, 78 rows. And I have um, 21 grams left of a 50 gram skein. So for rows 79, let's see. So for rows 79 to 84, we're just gonna knit, just straight knitting. So as I come to these stitch markers, which, so I'm gonna mark, I do keep track of my rows, but I am gonna put my right side marker back on. Um, some people may not need these stitch markers. I like to put it on here because it helps me remember that these last four stitches, the first four stitches are always knit. And it helps me keep track with my pattern. If for some reason I got off along the way, I know that if my count is off, I'm, I'm figuring it out here and not further down the next row. So for the next, for row 79, I'm gonna go ahead and just knit. We're gonna just knit all the way across for rows 79 to 84. And we can just drop these stitch markers. We don't need them anymore because we're just gonna knit every row, right side and wrong side. We're just gonna knit for rows 79 to 84. And I'll meet you guys back here. Okay, so I just finished row 84. I have, it looks like 19 grams left. Um, stitch markers are off and now I'm going to bind off now this bind off I'm sure has a name I don't know what it is I'm terribly sorry but this is one of my favorite bind offs so I knit the first stitch and then I bring the yarn over the top from the back to the front over the top I knit the next stitch and then I pull what was my first knit and my yarn over, over my new knit stitch.
okay? So it gives you a really great bind off. It's really stretchy because of that, that yarn over from back to front. And you pass those two stitches over the top. Wrap all the way to the end. Okay, there we go. I just looked out my window and we are getting some snow. <laughs> We're expected a couple of storms today, but as I'm recording it, it is January 6th of 2024. Okay, keep right on going all the way to the end and I'll meet you there. Okay, get that camera to stop bouncing. I am on my last two stitches for my bind off. So I'm gonna go over, knit, pass the first two stitches on my right needle over the third, wrap it, knit, Pass those two stitches over the third. So then I have one stitch left. And the way I end is I take my snippets and I cut mm, a couple inches and, and I pull that yarn through the loop and tighten it up. And now I'm able to weave in this in, but if you look at this bind off edge, look at how pretty that is. And it's so stretchy. The cast on that I did, so stretchy. And I just love it. This is like the perfect size washcloth for me. I don't know, maybe it's because I'm a grandma and I want more surface coverage. I want come on now I want to put this in my hand and I want I want to I want to scrub with it and this is such a fantastic size to do that um, I will probably block this just for some photos with you guys this only took me realistically about four hours start to finish so I'm gonna weave in these ends and because I want like this was a 50 gram skein Okay, let's see how much we have left. I have 18 grams left. Now, with 18 grams left, what am I gonna do with this? Well, I'll tell you, for this video, I'm probably gonna make a smaller cloth with these 18 grams. And then I'm gonna grab another color of this cotton, and I'm going to write up the pattern and the stitch count where I'm using, what was that, 19 grams? Is that what that was? 17. So that I'm using 25 grams of a mini instead of 33. Okay, so maybe I cut out one of the repeats and I cut out one of the repeats and I make a smaller cloth so that you could potentially get a 50 gram skein and get two dishcloths out of it. So that is how I'm gonna spend the rest of my Saturday, um, is making something a little smaller so that if you wanted to make something smaller and get two cloths out of a 50 gram skein, you have that option and that'll be, those stitch counts will be available on that written pattern as well if you're interested. So there you have it, there is our final gift project for January. Let's see, can you see that whole thing? 
for January of 2024. Yay! all three sizes done. So the large one, which is weighing 34 grams. The medium one, which weighed 24 grams. And then the small one, which I just finished, weighing 12 grams. So I have about five grams left of the teal and I have 26 grams left of the purple. So I am going to work on getting a second purple one done tonight. So I have that pair of the purple. Um, and I have all of my notes for all three sizes. I've got all three sizes here. And I'm gonna work on typing those up and getting those up on my Kofi account. And I just finished editing all the rest of this video, this tutorial video, and realized I was saying Kofi or coffee. I was saying coffee clearly because I needed more coffee when I was recording. It is a Kofi account and I will have mine linked below just as soon as I have these patterns um, in PDF form so that you can print them if you want to. So if you don't see the Kofi link down below, that means I haven't gotten the PDF version ready to be printed. But if that link is down below, then that means you can get in there and access those digital files. Um, if you decide that you would like to print out um, one of the, if you would like a printout of the pattern, it will be accessible if you see that link down below. So I'm going to wrap up here. I hope you guys enjoyed this. It was a good first tutorial. I think it was a pretty basic pattern. Um, and it was good for me as far as using my new tripod. Um, definitely some things I'll tweak for the next one. But thanks for sitting through it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Bye! <laughs>